We have discussed about various scales available to a researcher. We also classified them into four different types, Thurston scale, Likert scale, Gutman scale as well as semantic differential scale. We discussed their characteristics, their use for the researcher. We compared them, but we did not give enough attention to construction of these scales. Today we will discuss about construction of these scales. If you know how to construct, then that procedure can be followed and the scale or attitude scale which you want to develop will be of better quality. Let us see in detail. First scale is the Thurston scale. Robert Thurston was one of the first most productive scaling theorists. He worked on scales, how to design scales. He invented three different methods for developing unidimensional scales and they are method of equal appearing intervals, method of successive intervals and method of paired comparisons. We have seen that there are different types of scales which are associated with statistical analysis and these are nominal scale, ordinal scale, interval scale and ratio scale. Thurston said that while preparing this scale, this attitude scale, we can assume that interval scale is appropriate for this scale. The respondents will be able to respond to the stimuli if the scale is on interval scale. He developed the procedure by which we can generate 20 statements, some positive and some negative. On these statements, the respondents will respond. They would agree or they would not agree but they would put a tick mark. It is not a 5 point scale, it is only agree or disagree and on interval scale. We know that either these are positive or negative, but while scoring it you have to be careful when scoring positive and negative you have to do it appropriately. Let us see the steps in designing Thurston scale. We know that any scale or any instrument or any research data collection tool one has to prepare, then first thing is that you have to refer to the objectives of your study. You also have to refer to the framework, theoretical framework which you have on the basis of which you have prepared your objectives and also stated your hypothesis. So on every scale preparation process, this is the first level. So we are not going to refer it to first step. Let us understand and assume that this is the first step. Now after that, once you know the objectives, you have identified the concepts because your theoretical framework gives you the concepts, the procedures, the processes, what you want to study or investigate. You have identified the concept which you want to investigate or the idea which you want to investigate or a trait which you want to investigate. Now the first step here to create a Thurston scale is to collect many statements which are related to this concept. These statements can be 100 to 200 statements. You collect those statements, but the characteristic of this statement is they are non-factual. They should not be giving the facts. We should not take a statement that Delhi is the capital of India. That is a factual statement. It is not opinion. The statements which you are supposed to collect, they should be opinion based statements. So if opinion is there about the capital, Delhi is not the right place for a capital. This is an opinion, this is not a fact. So you have to select, collect, collate the statements which are opinion based and which are non-factual. That is the first step. The second step is to get them rated. Now who will rate them? You have to request pool of judges. This number could be from 50 to 300. So large number of people are invited to work as judges to judge and to rate these statements. How will they judge? We form 11 groups ranging from negative or non-favorable attitude to positive or favorable attitude. Now the judges are told to rate each statement on these 11 categories. So they will put a tick mark on one of them. So it is negative, neutral, positive. This is the continuum. This was the second step. So all judges have now rated all those 120, 150 statements which you have collected. Now that the judges have rated all those statements, 
the third step is to give a median ranking. Every statement is now rated. So, if you have appointed 150 judges, you will get 150 ratings for one statement. Now, you have to find out a median value. You know what is median value? Median value is a center point around which 50 percent cases on both sides lie. So, that middle point we have to find out and you know that there are statistical techniques to compute median. So, you compute a median there so that you know the value, the median score of each statement. So, you have 120 statements, so each statement has a median position, median value. Now, the statements that have two broad variation, they should be removed because if you make a statement and people are rating it from 1 to 11, that means it is really not correctly understood. You cannot have a variation like this, they must be ambiguous or people must be thinking that they are irrelevant. So, such statements should be discarded because now you have to discard statements from 120 to 20 statements, you are selecting only 20 statements. So, you have to use your uh, decision making power to discard the statements and reduce the number to 20. How do we do that? So, ambiguous statements should be taken out, irrelevant statements should be taken out, those which have wide variation should be removed and now we have to come back to 20 statements. Once you have identified those 20 that your uh, opinion air or attitude scale is ready, a Thurston scale is ready. Now, let us take one example. The statement here is about killing of animals. The statement says animals should never be killed under any circumstances. Now, this is rated by 200 judges and see the value 150 say 1 and 50 say 2. So, if you talk about percentile that is median percentile 50 median, the score is 1.17 because most of them are giving ranking as 1. Let us take another statement, it says animals should be killed only to save life of human being, otherwise they should not be killed. Now, this statement is rated by 200 people, see how they are rated, people are giving from number 1 to 5. And if you say percentile 50 that is median, the score is 3.05. But you will also see that it is spread, 10 people are saying 1 and 20 people are saying 5, that kind of wide range is there. That means, people have not understood this statement properly, they are not polarizing at one place. So, this statement should be discarded. Now, you have 20 statements and your attitude scale is ready you give it to 200, 300 people and ask them only to rate agree or disagree. Now, there is no 5 point or 11 point scale. That 11 point was only to see the extremity, only to judge whether the statement has extreme variation. Now, in your Thurston scale, you will have only 20 statements or 12 statements, 15 statements and only agree or disagree. So, you want people to agree or disagree. So, each statement has a positive value or a negative value. Now, when you get the results of this 200, 300 sample, this is a sample similar to sample which you are going to select. We have yet not started our real study, we are still in construction of Thurston scale. When the form was ready with 20 statements, we have selected a sample of about 200, 300 people similar to your study. They are drawn from the same population and you have given it to them and you have asked them to say agree or disagree. Now, you have again these 200, 300 ratings. From that, you have to find out, you have to judge whether those 20 statements which you have included, they are correctly included or not. You will see in various journals that people conduct their study and for that study they use Thurston scale. Here two examples are cited, one is measuring students attitude towards educational use of the internet, other is measuring students attitudes towards learning science. Let us see now how Likert scale is prepared. We know that Likert is widely used scale in research especially in psychology, sociology as well as in education. And we also know that Likert scale has a statement, a list of statements and it has 
five point scale. Likert actually gave five point, but we can have three point, we can have seven point, we can have nine point scale. That is possible. Here also, let us see the steps in construction of this Likert scale. First is to collect statements which are related to the concept which you want to investigate. A large number of items considered relevant to your concept are collected. While collecting that you must know that these statements are in favor of your concept or not in favor of your concept. So, they are talking about favorably or not favorably. Such statements will be collected. The first step in constructing Likert type scale is to collect as many statements related to your concept as possible. These will be 100, 200 statements either they are favorable or they are not favorable to your concept. So, these statements are collected which clearly indicate favor or not favor. Once you collect these statements, the second step is to administer this to a group or a sample which is drawn from the same population. This sample is also representative of the same sample which you will be using for your studies. So, you invite this sample, you select this sample and give these statements to them to rate. Now, you have to score this the most favorable statements will get the highest score because you have selected the statements which are either most favorable or least favorable. So, in your statement list the statements which are most favorable will get the highest score. Now, each individual score is totaled because if you have 100 statements and everybody is giving rating on all those 100 each one's each one individual statement. A score is collated. Now, you have to select because it is a long list of statements and you have to select a small number out of this. You have to see, you have to discard some of the statements which are rated with a wide variation. You have to use statistical formula to see the statements which clearly differentiate between the positive and negative. So, they can be discarded. The statements which differentiate best, they can be selected, they can be more than 6, they can be up to 20. So, these statements which are differentiative, which would give you an idea that people, there is the sample would be able to rate either favorable or not favorable very clearly, only those statements are selected. In this list, there are items which are positive and there are items which are negative. Here one example is cited. This is related to measuring students attitudes towards learning with social media, validation of the social media learning scale. These two researchers developed this scale which is called social media learning scale. Now, they use 147 adult social media users to validate this Likert type scale, but there were only 8 items and there were 5 categories from strongly agree to strongly disagree. Alpha was calculated, you can see that it is 0.78 which is quite respectable. So, using this the social media learning scale which was developed, we can say that it is usable. Let us see the third type of scale, Gutman scale, how to prepare, how to construct Gutman scale. Here also you have to select statements that are failed to apply to the measurable objectives. You have already identified objectives, you have already identified the concept or a trait or a thought towards which you have to evaluate or investigate the attitude. Now, you select about 100 sample. Now, these statements have to be tested because you have to prepare a small list of statements out of this big list. So, you select judges about 100 and give them this list. The statements which are 80 percent or above agreement or disagreement can be discarded because they are the extreme. Now, when you have a list, you have to arrange them from most favorable to least favorable. Which are these statements? You put these statements from left to right. We will see in a short while how they are arranged and how they are selected. We are arranging them from most favorable to least favorable. We also have to discard the statements which fail to differentiate between these two extremes. Then we calculate the coefficient of reproducibility. How it is calculated? 
first you calculate the number of errors. Number of errors means favorable responses that do not fit the pattern. What is coefficient of reproducibility? It is equal to 1 minus number of errors divided by total number of responses. This will give you a number like coefficient of correlation which is less than 1. Like coefficient of correlation is always less than 1. If reproducibility equals to 0.9 or greater, a unidimensional scale is said to exist. So, you can accept that. Now, let us see one example. This Gutman scale is prepared for testing the attitude towards immigrants. Many statements were identified, but we are only writing here 5 or 6. See the list. I would permit a child of mine to marry an immigrant. I believe that this country should allow more immigrants in. I would be comfortable if a new immigrant moved next door to me. I would be comfortable with new immigrants moving into my community. It would be fine with me if new immigrants moved into my block. I would be comfortable if my child dated a new immigrant. Now, big list out of that these are rated, we prepare a cumulative scale. We prepare a matrix which shows from most favorable to least favorable statements. Then we sort this matrix by this most favorable to least favorable. And then from left to right, we see the most favorable are on the left and least favorable on the right. We sort the statements and select those 20 statements, about 20 statements to form a scale. You see that the respondents numbers are given in the first column and if you see that from left to right, the positive yes, yes, yes is reducing. So, we are selecting item number 2, we are selecting item number 7, we are selecting item number 5, but item number 3, item number 8 may not be selected. Now, we select these statements based on most favorable to the least favorable. We have a list of statements which can form a Gutman scale. Let us see which statements are selected. I believe that this country should allow more immigrants in. I would be comfortable with new immigrants moving into my community. It would be fine with me if new immigrants moved into my block. I would be comfortable if a new immigrant moved next door to me. I would be comfortable if my child dated a new immigrant. I would permit a child of mine to marry an immigrant. If you see, if we number them from 1 to 6, you will see that if you agree with number 4, that means first 3 you have already agreed. If you agree with number 6, that means first 5 you have already agreed because that is the highest level which we are talking about. When you form a Gutman scale, you are not arranging them like this. You will be mixing them up so that the respondents will not see a sequence. But here we have shown you a sequence that the previous one is already accepted when you go to the next one. Once you administer this scale, the score on each statement can be added and that becomes the attitude scale of that person towards that particular concept or an event or a thing. Now, let us see another scale, semantic differential scale. We have already seen semantic differential refers to the words which are on the scale to other extreme. One is positive, another is negative. We are talking about respondents attaching meaning to that word. This meaning is attached by the respondent to that word. Meaning is of two types and that is why the words can be of two types. One is denotative and other is connotative. What is mean by denotative? Denote it, it is the meaning is denoted. If we say jaguar, it is the name of an animal. So, that is the meaning given to that word. This is denotative. And what is connotative? Connotative is not the meaning given. It is the meaning attached to that word. Now, if you say jaguar, that jaguar we attach a meaning of power to it. it is, we do not see jaguar as an animal. We are saying then this becomes a connotative meaning. The semantic differential uses this kind of connotative meaning. It asks the respondent what meaning you attach to this pair of words. Connotative meaning is not the actual explicit meaning 
which that word has. It is the meaning attached to that word by the respondent. As we have seen earlier, in this scale, there are polar words, polar adjectives. So, good and bad, beautiful and ugly. These are the two extreme words, so adjectives, but they are polar adjectives. Osgood first suggested this type of scale, which is called semantic differential scale. He used three areas, one strength, other is value and third is activity. He thought that in any uh, scale which we prepare can have these three, not necessarily all three together, but each one of them has a peculiar place in the scale. Now, let us see the examples here. If you talk about strength, strong and weak, this pair, this polar adjective pair tells us about the strength, decisive, indecisive. This gives the meaning of strength, value, good and bad, cheap, expensive. We are talking about value attached to it. Activity, you can use the word active and passive that shows how actively people are engaged into that concept or event or that process. Lazy, industrious, this is a pair which gives you the sense of activity. So, Osgood suggested some of these words, adjectives which could be used as polar pair. Now, let us see how semantic differential scale is prepared. The first step as usual is to refer to your theoretical framework, refer to your objectives and identify the concepts which you want to investigate. Now, you select pairs which would define, which would explain these concepts in a priori grounds. You have to now identify or select the appropriate words which describe your concept. So, you have two types of groups with you, maybe experimental group and control group, if you are working with them or different types of groups and give it to them and ask them which are the adjectives clearly define, clearly explain your concept. Ask them to rate. If you have a list of say 30 adjectives, ask them to rate which one are more appropriate and which one are not so appropriate. The ranking only will tell you that the highest ranking can are relevant, highest ranking are more appropriate. What is more important is the instructions. The respondents must be given clear cut instructions what is expected of them. Sometimes you may say that you are not interested in real meaning of it. We are not talking about active means actually working with something. We are talking what we are asking them that if you are this, you are involved in this, how will you explain, how would you define. So, these kind of instructions are very important to give them the role put them into the role and then ask them to rate the adjective, the pair of adjectives which you have selected. Remember, this is not denotative, this is connotative. So, the meaning attached to the words is more important rather than the actual meaning of this or explicit meaning of the word. Once you get those ratings from two different groups, because you have given them different instructions, their outlook is different. Now, you get them, then you take their ratings and find out which are the pairs which are clearly coming out, which are distinguished, which are differentiating from others. After analysis of this data from these raters, then you shortlist your scale, not more than 12, 13, 14 statements. We are not talking about 50 statements in a scale, they can be 8, they can be 10, they can be 12. It is a short semantic differential scale. Once this is ready, you have to do the pilot testing. You select a sample which is, which resembles or which represents the population, but not the sample which you will be using in your real study. Select that sample and administer this, your final scale to them. Once you get that data, you analyze it and see to what extent it is being valid, it is being reliable. Here are some do's and don'ts while constructing semantic differential scale. As I said earlier, not more than 20 statements, 12 can be optimal, 
if you use fewer than 12, the better. Secondly, do not put all good on one side and all bad on other side. That is positive on one side and negative on another side. That will create a monotony and the rater may go on rating at one particular point. In order to avoid that, mix positive and negative in both the lines. What is more important is clear cut instructions to the respondent how you expect them to respond. Generally in semantic differential scale we use a 7 point scale but you can use a 5 point scale, you can use a 3 point scale as well. We have seen today how to construct these scales because these scales are very important tools for data collection and if there is a fault in constructing them naturally that will show in your data collection as well as your results will be affected. So it is better that we understand the correct procedure of constructing these scales, construct it that way and then use it. Thank you.